talking to you guys about how to change disc brake pads. There are basically two main types of braking systems on an automobile. You've got either disc brakes or drum brakes. Drum brakes are a hell of a lot more complicated than disc brakes. So for our time constraint, I'm just going to do disc brakes today. I personally have been a Group 2 professional rally car driver for about two years now. And I can't tell you enough how much I love brakes. <laughs> if I didn't have good brakes, you see those group of people right there? They would have been roadkill. Because I came into that corner about 60 miles an hour. Brakes are essential. If you can't slow down, it's not worth it to go fast. And if you're not checking your brakes, this can happen. When you're riding with that sketchy friend that says, oh, it's just a squeak. Yes, it could just be a rock. Or they could have worn down their pads to the point that it is breaking apart the rotor, which, as you guys can see, is not small. So today, I'm going to talk about all of the components involved in brakes, how they work together, and how to change your brake pads. So, pretty important stuff. This is all of the components involved in your braking system. Most people will look at it and be like, okay, I'll just jam the pedal and it'll work without knowing what a vacuum power booster or a brake reservoir or a master cylinder or anything is. And the more you understand your vehicle, the better driver you're going to be. So aside from the obvious, the brake warning light and your pedal, what will happen when you're braking is when you engage the pedal, your car is actually using the vacuum pressure from the engine that goes into a reservoir to actually increase the amount of pressure that you're putting against your pads. Your pads will be sitting inside of this caliper. If you can see from the inside of the caliper, there's a little hollow spot, and that's because somebody had taken out the piston of this caliper. But essentially all a braking system is, is a hydraulic piston setup. So you're pushing fluid under pressure against the pad that'll squeeze the wheel and slow it down. But you're actually not squeezing the wheel, you're squeeze, squeezing the rotor. So this caliper will rest on top of a bracket, on top of the rotor, and as soon as you apply pressure to the pedal, it'll apply pressure to the rotor, thus slowing down your wheels. So from the pedal, you get the vacuum booster, and then you get into the master cylinder. It'll distribute even fluid all the way out throughout your brake lines, and then engage those pads. <coughs> a little bit of a closer look on that, you can see this is the rotor that we're talking about, and this is the bracket that the caliper is actually resting in. It's pretty easy once you've actually, how many of you guys have actually taken off your own wheels? Okay, how many of you guys have done your own brakes? Nice, okay. So once you've got your wheels off, it's pretty easy. These two bolts on the back side of the caliper will come off and you should be able to jimmy that piston back because it's still gonna have pressure on that rotor and slide the caliper off. Once the caliper's off, then you can get inside and you can change out the pads. So these are the pads that, and I'm sorry I didn't have any to bring with you guys today, but they're either made of a synthetic or a rubber compound that's high temperature resistant because you guys could see in the first video just how hot that got before it blew apart in two million pieces. Brakes are really, really durable. Once you've completely disassembled the caliper and you've gotten down to the pads, you switch out the pads, you throw them in, back in their bracket, and you'll just reassemble everything as you did. But the one more 
probably the most important thing that I think a lot of people forget is that you need to bleed your brakes. Bleeding your brakes basically means you're running fluid through those brake lines until you get air out of the system. If you've got air in the system of your lines, you're going to get uneven braking pressure or no braking pressure. So either one tire will lock up and one will keep spinning or you'll have nothing. And unfortunately, I don't have enough time to show you guys the process <laughs> of how to bleed brakes. So I guess you're SOL. <laughs> I added a link in my slide. These guys are really good about making it straightforward and showing you how to bleed your own brakes. So, I talked about some of the components involved in brakes, how important it is to check your brakes, and how they all work together, and how to change your pads. Always remember that brakes save lives. It doesn't matter how fast you can go if you can't slow down. Changing your own brakes will save you about 60 to 100 bucks a year, depending on how fast you drive a car, on somebody else to change them for you. And lastly, knowing your brakes means knowing your limits. What's most important for me as a driver is I need to know what my car can handle. Because if I push past the boundaries of my car, I'm not only the only one in danger, but anybody else around me is potentially in danger. Any questions? <laughs>